We've just got to stop it, guys. Hey there, guys. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are addressing the topic of the cup test. This is a test to test out your hair's porosity that has been circulating around on the internet for as long as I have embraced my wavy curly hair, which is at least for the past five years. Now, why would you need an at-home test with a cup and some water to determine your hair's porosity? Well, there is this thought process, this theory that knowing your hair's porosity can really help you pick the right products for your hair and wildly improve the health of your curls and get you the curls of your dreams. Now, before we get in to why the cup test is garbaggio, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell because I selfishly want to see your beautiful shining face again here on this channel. I am honored and very grateful that I get to hang out with each and every single one of you on your healthy hair journey. I am here trying to do my very best to help you embrace the hair that you are fearfully and wonderfully made with. Why? because for years I believed that I just had bad hair. That hair that wouldn't air dry straight, had the odd bend and kink in it. It definitely wasn't curly and I didn't really even think it was all that wavy. I just thought my hair needed to be blow fried into submission so that it would behave. But turns out that underneath the odd bend and kink in my hair, underneath the floof, were these beautiful curls just waiting to be unlocked. And when I figured out how to nurture and nourish and love on the hair that I was born with, it unlocked this incredible, deep, deep self-acceptance that I didn't even know was possible. I was always an incredibly self-conscious person and I always thought that I wasn't good enough, but somehow learning how to scrunch gel into my hair and plop my hair and diffuse my hair and wear my waves and curls showed me that how I am created is actually wonderful and beautiful and worth taking care of. And that I want that for you too, which is why I'm here. And I had this incredible misconception about the porosity of my hair and this thing called the cup test. You best believe the instant I heard of the cup test, I did the thing. What the cup test is, is you take a cup of water and place a hair on the surface of the water and how fast your hair sinks or floats and whether or not your hair floats or sinks will tell you if you have low porosity, medium porosity, or high porosity hair. Hair porosity is a spectrum, guys. It is not you are low porosity, you are high porosity. There's this wide, wide range of in-between of hair porosities, so just keep that in mind. But if your hair is super low porosity, in theory, in the cup test, your hair will float. It will not absorb any of the water because those hair cuticles are laying down really nice and tight, really, really flat, and your hair can't soak up any of the water, floats on top of the water, you have low porosity hair. If you have high porosity hair, the idea is that all those hair cuticles are way lifted up. There's lots of openings, holes, and gaps for water to soak into the hair. And your hair will sink, and it will sink rather quickly, meaning that you have high porosity hair. If you do the cup test, you put your hair in and it sinks. It's high porosity because it soaked up all the water really quickly, high porosity. Now that we understand what the cup test is, let's talk about all the problems with this test. The first problem with the cup test is, is that it is nearly impossible to remove all oil and product buildup from the hair before doing the test. And any product left on your hair will interfere with the results of the test. In order for the test to work perfectly, the hair has to be completely and utterly product free. This is what every website that talks about the cup test will tell you you have to do. But we all know in practice to wash your hair with a very clarifying shampoo and get a shed hair out of your head after it's been clarified and to like set it on a counter and let it air dry completely and be 100% bone dry is kind of tricky 
because when you clarify your hair, it gets really squeaky. It gets really difficult to manage. And the only thing you want to do is just put conditioner on your hair the instant you clarify, or at least I do. So that's one problem with this. If there is any oil buildup left on the hair, there will be an occlusive barrier formed around the hair that will block water from absorbing into the hair, making it appear that you have lower porosity hair than you do, because you're gonna put that piece of hair that has the oil on it in the cup for the cup test, and it's just gonna sit there, because the oil's gonna block it from absorbing water. And you're gonna think, ah, I have low porosity hair, when in fact, you may not actually have low porosity hair, you just have a lot of oil buildup going on. And if there is any residual conditioner buildup on the hair, and you put it in the cup test, and you think you got all the conditioner off, but there's still conditioner on your hair, it is going to break the surface tension of the water way more quickly, and that hair is going to sink much faster than if that conditioner weren't left on the hair, and it's going to make your hair appear that it's higher porosity than it may or may not actually be. The conditioner is affecting how the hair interacts with the water. Another factor is how fine or coarse your hair is. Did you know that water has this thing called surface tension? I kind of mentioned it in the first issue with the cup test, but if your hair is incredibly coarse, I mean very, very coarse and substantial, and you put it in the cup for the cup test, it is going to break the surface tension of the water simply due to its weight. The heavier it is, the faster it's going to sink, regardless of the porosity of the hair. If your hair is incredibly, incredibly fine, it's not gonna weigh very much. It's going to sit on top of the water and not break the surface tension of the water, even if it's incredibly high porosity. Your hair is gonna appear to be low porosity due to the cup test, because it's just gonna sit there on top of the water, not breaking the surface tension of the water because it's so, so fine. Guess what? I know for a fact that when I first did this test, I had incredibly damaged high porosity hair. There were more gaping holes in my hair than Swiss cheese. It was ridiculous. But I did this cup test, put my hair on top of the water, and guess what? It floated there for days. Why? Because my super high porosity, super fine hair never broke the surface tension of the water. So for a long time, I thought I had low porosity hair, when in fact my hair was incredibly damaged and incredibly high porosity. Another factor that affects the cup test is how humid or dry the climate is in which you live. If it's an incredibly humid climate, your hair cuticle is naturally going to be more lifted because your hair's gonna be slightly swollen from having absorbed some of the moisture from the air. Now, if you do the cup test and it's incredibly humid, you're gonna put your hair on the surface of the water and assuming we break the surface tension of the water, the hair's going to sink faster because that hair cuticle was lifted simply due to the humidity in the air. If it's incredibly, incredibly dry, same thing. Your hair cuticle is gonna be more sealed, more closed. Humidity will affect how quickly your hair sinks or if it floats on the surface of the water. Another issue with the cup test is, is that you are only testing one strand of hair and you can have multiple, multiple, multiple different porosities in different areas of your hair. If your hair is finer in certain areas, if it's coarser in others, all affect what the porosity is of that strand. And think about it. When you go get your hair highlighted, do they highlight every single strand on your head? Not usually. Usually what they're doing is they are taking bits and pieces and weaving the highlights through your hair. The strands that got the chemical processing are going to be higher porosity, whereas the virgin strands of hair that are right next to it are going to be a lower porosity. Now, of course, if you're slapping bleach on every strand of your hair, every single strand is going to get higher porosity, but you kind of get the idea that's not the most common standard practice amongst hairdressers for highlighting the hair. Also, the same applies to if you color your hair or not. There is less damage that occurs to the hair when you color it than if you're highlighting it. Highlighting it's going to lift that hair cuticle more than if you're just depositing color, but there is still some change in effect in hair porosity, even with coloring of the hair. and. You can even increase the porosity of your hair due to friction. 
I have higher porosity hair right here at the nape of my neck simply because of how I sleep at night. Even though I'm sleeping on a silk pillowcase and decreasing friction, I still wallow on that pillowcase and it roughs up that hair cuticle, increasing the porosity of the hair at the nape of my neck, whereas the porosity of my hair over here is lower because simply there's less friction that it comes into contact with. If you have really long hair and you wear your hair down often, even the friction rubbing against your clothes can increase the porosity of that hair, make it more tangly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Not only is hair porosity on a scale and a spectrum, but you can also have different porosities all over your head. At your roots, your hair is naturally going to be lower porosity. There is this misconception out there on the internet that you can have naturally high porosity hair, that if you do nothing to your hair, the instant it sprouts out of your scalp, it's going to be high porosity simply because it's that way naturally. That is false. And the reason is, is that when hair grows out of your head naturally, it is going to be completely virgin, completely undamaged, and that means it is low porosity. All those hair cuticles are going to be laid down in a beautiful, smooth, sealed way. Now, what happens to your hair directly thereafter is up to you. I believe the misconception where people think they have naturally high porosity hair, they either have incredibly, incredibly fine hair, which tends to become higher porosity more quickly than coarse hair, or they get bleach, color, and highlights instantly the moment the hair grows out of their head, making them believe that they have naturally high porosity hair when in fact they are just increasing the porosity of their hair due to their relationship with their stylist and their highlight color schedule. The last problem with the cup test is, is that it is subjective. It is incredibly difficult to control all the variables of this test and how hard you drop the hair on the water will determine whether or not you break the surface tension of the water simply by dropping the hair on it. If you have incredibly long hair, are you going to just take the ends of it and do the cup test with just the ends? Perhaps you observe the results of the test and you feel like it kind of sort of sinks at a medium-ish pace and therefore you have medium porosity. Whereas if somebody else were to observe the exact same test, they would assume that the rate at which that hair fell was fast and therefore the hair is high porosity. It's too subjective. There are no clinical data points that are proven to determine whether or hair is high, medium, or low porosity. Which brings us to the end. I'm sure you are very bummed and sad at this moment wondering, Courtney, then how the heck am I supposed to determine my hair porosity because I need to know this in order to choose the correct products for my hair. I get it. Not having this piece of knowledge can be quite irritating and frustrating. And there is an actual way to determine for sure what your hair porosity is, but it does require you to ship a sample of your hair off to a lab to be examined under a microscope. Now, the one company that I knew of that did this actually has closed its doors and is no longer in business. There are some other ones, but I don't personally have any experience with any of these. So if you, there, in the comments, right there, you, can you help us out and comment down below if you have a really good trusted lab for testing hair porosity, that would be great. I would really appreciate us helping each other out in the comments. Y'all are really good at that and I deeply appreciate when y'all are helpful like that. But do you really need to know your hair porosity? If you're a hair nerd like me and really find this stuff interesting, by all means, let's ship our hair off to a lab to be tested so that we can know our hair porosity. Why? Because it's fun. But I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. You don't actually need to know your hair porosity to improve the health of your hair and to get the best curls you've ever had. The longer I do this, the more humans I talk to, the more information I gather, the more I begin to realize that while knowing your hair porosity can be sort of helpful, higher porosity hair tends to do better with more occlusive ingredients. It also tends to absorb way more product than low porosity hair. Not only are you going to be reaching for things like 
hair creams, and hair masks more often than people with low porosity hair. You're also going to be grabbing a lot more of each of those products. That has definitely been my experience when I highlighted my hair to the heavens. I noticed it needed a ton of curl cream in order to kind of fill the gaps in my hair. And lower porosity hair tends to be super prone to build up. It doesn't love a lot of oils and butters because those things build up very quickly on low porosity hair as there are no openings or gaps to fill in low porosity hair. So it gets build up -y real fast. So it tends to do better with lighter weight products. Now, does that mean do you need more protein or more moisture or more hold or less hold depending on your porosity? No. How much protein and moisture your hair needs is more determined by how fine or coarse your hair is and how much hold each of your products has. Has nothing to do with your hair porosity, but everything to do with your preferred outcome with your wash day. I personally prefer all the hold always, all the time. The more hold, the more better. My wavier hair tends to do better with super hard hold gels. And that has not changed whether or not my hair was low porosity or high porosity. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope this cleared up some confusion when it comes to the cup test. Honestly, you don't even really need to know your hair's porosity. You can embrace the hair that you are fearfully and wonderfully made with without this piece of information. All of the at-home tests that are out there are subjective and open to error and can really just confuse you. If you think you have one extreme porosity over the other, it could set you back. It could send you down a rabbit hole that leaves you confused for a while. I know it sure did for me. And when I quit focusing so much on knowing my hair's porosity and really just started focusing on application technique and paying attention to which products worked well for me and using consistent product amounts when I washed and styled my hair, I got way more consistent wash day results and the health of my hair improved at a much more rapid rate than when I was focused on its porosity. As always, I sure hope you are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you later. Bye.